Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just What I'm Playing, Final Fantasy XIV. Last episode we did uh, MSQ. A little bit of MSQ, and today we're going to go and continue with even more MSQ. Let's see if you know, Lynn, I've been looking all over for you. We've received, uh, urge we've received news regarding Flamin, Hori, Boulder and Coltonet. Really, has something happened? No, no, it's nothing bad. Quite the opposite, in fact. It seems that they once uh, once they learned the science's good name has been restored, they boarded the next ship bound for Limzalaminza. They should be arriving any moment now. It's easy to forget how useful link pearls are, isn't it? When they work, I mean. <laughs> and you don't mind being spied on. Quite. But what wonderful news. To think that our reunion is close at hand. Pleasure to see you too, Alfino. Ah, thank you, Kryl. What brings the two of you here? Carl and I have been looking into how we might track down Minfilia. And we may just have found the answer. <coughs> <coughs> Lin, when you were fleeing, uh, fleeing Ulda with Minfilia, you said that Heidelin spoke to her shortly before you parted ways, yes? Well, assuming that is true, and I see no reason to suspect that it is not, it seems reasonable to conclude that Heidelin commanded her, uh, her to remain behind. That is to say, the Mother Crystal directly interceded to guide Minfilia. Admittedly, this is all still quite hypothetical, but I propose that such intervention, however subtle, must leave uh, must surely leave some resi resi residual trace, a lingering disturbance in the ether or ripple, if you will. In order to establish the existence of such ripples, of course, we will require suitable data. Fortunately, I know where such data can be found. The battleground where Lin felt the Ultima weapon and the site of my personal ignominy. Nominee, whatever. It was there that Hydaelyn intervened to shield her from the magic I invoked. Kryl and I will, inter uh, will, will infiltrate the castle and analyze the ether therein. Uh, the two of you alone? I have a proven knack for subterfuge, and I'm confident that there will be no sufficient uh, that there will be sufficient nooks and crannies in which to hide Kryl while the patrols pass. Besides, if you and Lin come along, who will see to Flamin's grand homecoming? A grand homecoming? Yeah. When you put it like that, very well. I will trust in your plan. I don't know whether this data will yield a means to find Minfilia, but it will at the very least eliminate another avenue of inquiry. So Tori and I will return to the Rising Stones and make preparations for our comrades' return. Might I impose upon you to meet them at the Lominsen docks? Then I shall see the four, uh, the four of you at the Rising Stones. Safe travels. Off we go to Limbs and Lamenza. Wait, all of my chicken things are now like that? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I guess we're not gonna do it like that then. Let's see. Um... Hello. Oh, Lin, how have you been? Come here, let me have a good look at you. Thank the Twelve. One hears the strangest tales in Four Lands. I worried about you all every day. We would have sent word sooner, but the Braves afforded us no opportunity. When they fell upon us in the market, it was all we could do to escape. Tatar found her way to you, of course, but we were forced to seek shelter aboard a Hanish vessel. It pained us not being there when you needed us most, but we made the most of it, didn't we, Coltonet? Studied and trained from dusk till dawn, we did. We would have sent word sooner, but we knew not whom to trust, and with the vast distance. But those dark days are behind us at last. I shall be glad indeed to return home and speak to my with my daughter. What do you mean she's missing? How could you let this happen? Forgive me, I'm sure you're doing everything in your power to find her. <clears throat> A thankless man. Mm. I'm sorry, something just shot into my throat. A thankless must be. He watched uh, over her from the first, long before me, and he will watch over her to the last. I shall pray for a safe return and busy myself in the meantime. For certainly there is much and more to be done. The base may have bloodied us, but the path remains, and we shall not be swayed for it. From it. Why, that's the spirit to the Scions and a long overdue reunion. Huzzah! Nod. Well, there you have it. To the Rising Stones.
Another cutscene? Really? Okay. Oh yeah, I guess. These two are over here. Well done, sir. And with that, I believe we are ready to proceed. Yes, we are. Let me put this back on. And put it on auto advance. Thank you. Let us be about our business then. The next patrol may not be so credulous. <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> Why must you be so disappointingly brusque? You're not at all as Minfilia described, you know. I don't think you've favoured me with so much as a single compliment since we set out. Tell me, did your time in the wilderness sap you of all your charm? Or are you holding it in reserve for your beloved? This is neither the time nor the place. Well, call me old-fashioned, but when I'm risking life and limb infiltrating an Imperial Castrum, I like to be sure of my comrades' motivations. I see now where Alfino gets it from. Minfilia is dear to me, it is true, but not in the way you think. Fifteen years past, when she was still but a child, there was an incident at a parade. A gubu broke free of its fetters and ran amok through the streets of Ulda. Had I been more attentive, I could have prevented it. But I was distracted, and her father was killed. I feared she would never recover, but in the years that followed, she showed herself to be more resilient than I had ever imagined. And when she learned of her gift, she did not flinch from the responsibility, but sought to guide others on the path. She touched the hearts of all around her. Mine, Louis Soir, every science. In those dark days following the calamity, she was our guiding light, our hope for a brighter future. She had so many dreams, and I would give anything to make them come true. My apologies. I can see she means the world to you. I did not mean to pick at old scars. No harm done, I assure you. But fair is fair, my lady. What is Minfilia to you? You mean you don't know? Only my dearest friend. When I finally emerged from my torpor, I learned that Neri a day had passed without her asking after me. She never gave up hope. And neither will I. Then for Minfilia's sake, let us pray that these vestiges of Hydaelyn's intervention will lead us to her. Totally don't get PTSD when even slightly looking at anything or uh, that has to do with Castor Meridi Adam. <clears throat> or the Praetorium for that matter. Well, it's not really PTSD since I still do it from time to time. For the rewards! Oh. That is unlocked now, question mark? I guess that makes sense that I would be in luck right now. Um, I'll look for an opportunity to start that. Feels good to be home again. To think that everyone is waiting for us just beyond those doors. Friends and family with whom we have shared so much. God help me, but the older I get, the more sentimental I become. Come, let us not keep them waiting. <gasps> I'm having hiccups like crazy. I'm having a lot of stuff. Like all the background noise from very loud vehicles. But, well, what else is new? Alien, if I'm me, it fills my heart with joy to see you both hale and hearty. 
Or hale and healthy. I hate the fact that there's two of those. And what of Igiri? She is well, though brought on a mission at present. It wasn't the same without you. Welcome back, my lady. My lady. Oh, we could do it more of a, more of that around here. Heartfelt reunions with starward companions brings a brings a bloody tear to the eye. Oh me. The secret oneself uh, in a ship's hold to secure safe passage to a faraway land. This is a tale we all uh, we know all too well. When they are well rested, I should like to seek a formal introduction. Why wait, my friend? Come, there's no need to be shy. I pray grant me a moment longer, at least, though I am happy to oblige you, my legs are rather less accommodating. Glad though I am to be home, I cannot help but think of those who have yet to return. Once we have settled it, I settled in, I would, I would join the search. Ocker, what in the seven hells drove my little brother to come to Mardona? Why you, brother? You and the science, of course. For a thousand days I trained. I might grow as strong as you, then I might fight alongside you. Yet now that you are here, I sense that you have surpassed me once more. No, do not tell me. You trained with a Hanish, did you not? Your eyes do not deceive, brother. Hi, I have studied, with, studied the trials of the braves. <laughs> I'm drawing deeper the souls of mine enemies. <laughs> Fuck that. Also you. Oh my, decisions, decisions. Mmm. I've heard about this character. <laughs> From a certain someone. Hmm. Interesting. That may be like the one side character I will talk to every now and again. It's so long since I've seen them all like this. Also, this. Too long. It was the chaos born of my foolish ambitions which let, uh, which forced them to flee. Though they are though they are returned, there are others yet missing. Others whom we cannot forsake. We'll find them, Alfino. I know we will. In Philia, Ida, Papalimo, every last one. And when they walk through those doors, we'll be here to welcome them home. With me at the head of the queue, of course. Not. Cookie. Cookie. Sankul and Kral contacted us a short while ago. It would seem that their foray into Castle Rudy Adam bore fruit. They asked to be rendezvous with them in Ustola in Idlesar. They uh, were uh, they will share their findings. Bruto it is to depart without speaking to the guest of honor. I expect she will forgive me if I return with her daughter. Alright. To Idlesar. <coughs> My apologies, I see I am late. Uh, I'm the last to arrive. So, what news have you for us? Well, as you postulated, there were indeed... Uh, there were indeed what appeared to be the remnants of an unexplained disturbance in the ether at the scene of the Ultima Weapon's destruction. A ripple at odds with the presiding pattern. Though faint, the waveforms bore a strong resemblance to those observed following the destruction of the Isle of Val, when I believe Hydaelyn shielded me with the Blessing of Light. To confirm our findings, we paid a visit to the Sildi the Aqueducts. There we detected the same waveform. But, other, uh, but orders of magnitude larger, as one would expect of a more recent disturbance. Hydaelyn, there is no other explanation. But there is more. When I studied the site where Yishtola used flow, it appeared there uh, that not two, but three beings had been affected. Yet, unlike Yishtola and Thangrid, there was no trail to follow. Our unknown third party was simply there and then not there. Now recall your visions of a vast crystal floating in a, in a sea in a sea of ether. Though this too is but a theory. Studies of gifted subjects suge suggest that, when communing with Hydaelyn, we briefly leave our bodies behind. So let us consider the facts. One, Hydaelyn interceded. Two, a third being was caught in Yustola's flow and vanished without a trace. And three, Hydaelyn's, Hydaelyn may have the capacity to summon the consciousness of gifted individuals to her side. You're implying, I take it, that Hydaelyn guided Minfilia into the compass of my magic. That she, might, uh, that she might summon her body and soul onto the ethereal sea. In which case we must need to continue our search there, for a blessing. The means to do so already exists. 
I speak of the Anti Tower, a shoddy in construction conceived to provide scholars a vantage point over the Ethereal Sea. Though I know not where its entrance lies, we need only ask its last custodian, a contrary old crone who, for another blessing, refused to join the Exodus. Master Matoya was the keeper of the Anti Tower. I had no idea. Then our course is clear. We must petition her aid once again. I do not remember what the last job is that I played any content with. Also, I'll... You know what? I'll figure it out before I go there, because I cannot swap... To, like, I cannot swap Glamours when I'm over there, so I'll be right back. It would seem we are doing this content with Paladin. <clears throat> but alright. If you would. Please be voice acted. It's not going to be voice acted. I can see it from the camera angle. <laughs> ah, what a surprise. Well, what secrets have you come to extract from me this time? Ah, though it pains me to admit that your words strike close to the mark, we humbly ask that you grant us entry to the Anti-Tower, that we might use it to seek a friend who we believe has been transported to the Ethereal Sea. And who told you I could do such a thing, I wonder? The tower was abandoned to its magical keepers 15 years ago. They have the run of the place now. If that is no deterrent to you, then by all means. Is that all? I felt sure you would seek to dissuade us from our course, given your role as custodian. Ro? Hardly. The forum forced a title on me. During the Exodus, every entrance to the anti tower was sealed, save one. My role consists of making sure no one with ill intent sneaks through, uh, sneaks through it. Such was the forum's final order to me. Well, I can remove the wards right now. May I be going or not? We will, Master Matoya. We will do whatever it takes to find Minfilia. We'll see about that. You, Baldesian girl, you're staying here with me. I need your help to restore the wards to their original state. The rest of you can go, on the condition that you clean up the mess in the tower. If you encounter any unruly familiars, you're to tend to them. Those are my terms, and I'll hear no arguments. Well, it appears the missus has spoken. Lead to Aelin. The anti tower is now accessible. Alright, so we know what to do. I will be right back. Just immediate. Just instantaneously. Well, it is, like, literally just now it swapped to, like, the, the things have reset. The daily roulettes have just now reset. Alright, the anti tower is, well, it's something. has been a while. Well, it's not been a while since I ran this. It's been a while since I ran this at the tank. But I would say I could literally say it about everything. <laughs> I've, not been I've not been running a lot of dungeons as tank. Which is surprising, considering I'm... I would definitely call myself a tank main. <laughs> oh well. Time to go. Kind of a Rothgar with... No, another Rothgar rogue in with his freaking pompadour. Nice. I like that. That is how you should do it. Yes, yes. A river tamer. It's also like especially Paladin. It's like Paladin is the one thing which I just don't play that much. Or really just haven't played that much lately in general. Which, you know, isn't that big of a surprise considering... Well, actually, like, the biggest reason why is because I already got, like, um, I already got the Paladin mines before. You can get, like, mines, basically, from doing different content as Paladin. Or as any of the tanks. Um, and I already did that with, uh, with Paladin. And then I just went through the rest. And since Paladin is on my number one, like, on my list, basically, number one of the tanks. Then you run into a situation where I really just do not, uh... <laughs> And I'll play Paladin for a while. At least up until I'm done with my Gunbreaker mode. So there you have it, a little insight into my into my other business. Into Fred's business. Also, these these first pulls are horrible. <laughs> 
But I literally cannot pull any more than these three enemies. For each one of these encounters, so. May as well use my cool lines. Because I won't really be much else I have to use them on anyway. I keep forgetting that shot one is different now. I keep thinking that shot one works like the way it used to work, where it just like blocks attacks. But now it just reduces uh, damage by a certain amount. There's a push attire once with ears to listen. How wonderful. I, I. Actually, no, yeah, I just remembered one mechanic of this guy. The rest I wouldn't really call very worth it. I think if you touch those, you're probably gonna uh, be damaged. This thing is gonna continuously do damage in front of him in a cone. Yeah, those little balls blow up. You just keep singing. Which of course would damage you considering he's a frog. I mean no offense to frog, I guess. <laughs> Crap. And now he's going to turn two people into frogs. And the other two that are left need to the choir toads. Anyway, can move on. Toy hammer. That is the equivalent of the tank buster. Oh, really? Concussion. I guess that makes sense, but also. <laughs> But a choir toad, but he's already dead. I will greet on everything because I'm a greedy bugger. So we fly into the magical tower. We've traveled down the upstairs. Yes. <laughs> of course. Because why wouldn't we? Let's... I can finally do some at least decent pulls. this and then we're gonna have a monkey lie one of which is just in the air <laughs> for reasons unbeknownst to myself we're going to do the Can I hit you from here? Yes, I can. Yes, I dang diggly can. Ah, yes. <laughs> of rocks that just turns into these things which look really cool mind you okay and then there's going to be more homunculi i'm just going to stay in the middle and they should like definitely come close enough to the point that i can just grab them there i'm also going to use shelf one because there do be a lot of enemies around here I'm going to use one of these. I guess I could do this too. To give myself a little bit of an... of some extra shield. Oh, there was the other one. I was wondering about that. No, don't. There 
we go. And then we have Ziggy. Gyrating glare. Oh, really? 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 Okay, I think it's over. <laughs> My apologies for the lack of commentary, but... There was just somebody who decided to start drilling holes right underneath my room. Which I did not anticipate at all. So... I then decided to uh, mute myself. <laughs> the very tactically mute myself. Because that is not a noise that I can deal with being in my videos. Casting PK stars for me. Ah, yeah, so now we get the other noise. As I honestly should have anticipated that, now that noise I should have anticipated. Oh, uh, uh. gone and done it now. Oh well. At least that is something I can kind of deal with. Not ideal, but at the same time. As long as I am doing this, you know, duty that I cannot pause, um, we'll just have to deal with it. I we'll just have to deal with it. Then I can go downstairs and complain. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna complain at dinner. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna complain. Oh yeah, I don't need to do it in dungeons. We are Calcabrina. Adorable dolls, terrible dolls. Yep, ho ho. This is a reference to Final Fantasy IV. 
Creepy dolls. Everybody's favorite. Alright, so we have Kalkas and Brinos. And they will just move in random clicking spots and do their AoEs. Because why not? I'm gonna hit as many of those as I can. You're mindless cretins. And you're a creepy dog. Quite simple, really. The dolls begin to gather and create an even creepier doll. This thing's horrible. I hate this thing. Oh shit. Ah, oh, right now. Okay. The person who has that marker, that eye marker, just needs to uh, be aimed away. Let's knock out. Boom. Ah, brace. Directional parry means that you cannot attack the, this boss from any side except the front. At least in this particular set. The shields will appear and you can see the shields. Basically. You will be retaliated upon if you... Uh, if you attack the wrong side. And now he's going to turn... Or she. It. They. They stuff. Gonna turn into dolls, which we have to destroy so that they can turn back into normal people. I mean, while the slap sticking will just keep happening. And then another one of these. We go look away. There we go. And also aim it away from you know the rest of the people. Another one, really? Okay then. Really? Through time and space hast thou journeyed unto me, as I knew thou wouldst. We are the word of the mother. We, who were once called Minfilia.
Much time hath passed for thee since the bloody banquet. Since, since I hearkened to her word. Mother, Hydelin guided me towards Yishtola and Thancred, that I might be swept up in their flow and delivered unto the ethereal sea. There, adrift and alone, her voice silent once more, I prayed for those we had lost. For those we can yet save. To her I would make an offering. We speak now with one voice. One will. One word. Unto thee we bequeath the most precious of gifts. The truth which lieth at the heart of this world. Thus do we beseech thee once more. Hear, feel, sink. Before there was life in the depths of the ethereal sea, light and dark did once dwell as one. But the darkness coveted power, and the balance was broken. Thus was I forced to banish him unto the distant heavens, to forever remain apart. A moon bound. In sundering the star did we cry out, and the barriers twixt plains chanced to falter. Across ten and three were we then divided. Reflections of the source, each possessed of a shard. Zodiac longeth to be made whole. For his restoration, for his resurrection, his servants labor without cease. They seek to tear down the barriers which surround the source. Thus do they rejoice in their ardor, in your calamities, for each marks a rejoining. Seven times have they succeeded. Seven times hath the darkness grown stronger. Seven times have I failed. The Assians cannot be suffered to continue. This, this is my final. The crystal's power is all but spent. With what remains, I will return you to the shore of the ethereal sea. Blessed children, go forth and seek.
You've had another vision, haven't you? Let us return to Master Matoya's cave. Everyone will wish to hear what you saw. Still in one piece, are we? Well, did you learn anything? The word of the mother? I'm not sure I understand. Nor am I. Cryo? As unbelievable as it sounds, I see no reason to doubt her. The words tale. No one was more sensitive to the will of Hydaelyn than Menphilia. And... If Hydaelyn has grown so weak that she can barely make herself heard, it is not hard to see why Minfilia, having joined with her, might struggle to maintain her own form. What? Why would she need to maintain her own form? Are you saying... Are you saying she's gone? But that cannot be! Not now. Not after all we have accomplished. We were meant to wash her in the dawn's light together. She threw herself on the fire to fuel your dawn's light, boy. You'll just have to usher it in on your own. Must you be so ungentle? Tell me about the Scions, boy. The, the... The Scions of the Seventh Dawn lay before Aeolzia's salvation. Whenever the realm is threatened, be it by Primal, Asian, Garlean, or any other, we take up arms in her defense, that all in Aeolzia may live to see a brighter tomorrow. And that's very noble of you. But in chasing after these lofty goals of yours, you seem to have lost sight of some basic truths. To win a war, you must be willing to do whatever it takes. To fight, to kill, and if necessary, to die. The path you've chosen is paved with the dead. Walk it with your eyes open, or not at all. I know the truth of which you speak, and have from the first. If the Asians will go to any length to resurrect their god, then we must needs be as committed to our cause, to unmask them and their schemes, and to crush them both utterly. Come, there is much to be done. Yes, of course. Thancred, wait! No. No, this is all wrong. <sighs> the silence has returned. She's not coming back, is she? 
weighs on you too, I know. I understand why she made her decision, and yet... Every time I lose another friend, I have to ask myself if there was not another way. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed this episode of just how I was playing Final Fantasy XIV. In the next episode, we're going to go and continue with even more MSQ, I think. I'm pretty dang sure. I need to look for a good moment to pause the MSQ to do some other side content. Um, oh. We got this thing. <laughs> Intriguing. Uh, yeah, I'll figure it out off camera in my own time. Goodbye.